So we haven't got an ABT live show planned at the moment, but hey, what are we if we don't follow one of our best sponsored Daiwa's product launch for this year? Tommy Slater, I can see clouds of COVID in behind you there in Sydney, mate. What's going on? Yeah, it's a nice day, but the air is full of COVID in Sydney. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, we've, uh, we're have we not probably getting out of this anytime soon, but um, got some good stuff to talk about. We did our product launch last night, obviously. Um, so all the stuff's out there and uh, we thought we'd catch up and go through some of the stuff that's going to be, you know, right up the alley of all the tournament guys, whether it's Brim, Bass or Barra stuff. So That's right. Of course, uh, everyone that watches ABT Live and in fact, all ABT competitors are insatiable tackle junkies, of course. So uh, we want to know what's happening straight from the horse's mouth. And you're the man that's had a lot, design, a lot of input in designing these things. Um, Tell us the timeline of how long does it take for an idea in your head to become a product for sale? Uh, it kind of varies. So it could be um, as short, probably before COVID, as short as eight months turnaround between idea and, and product on the shelves. Yep. Uh, obviously, everyone knows the supply chain uh, is kind of a little bit different now than it was a couple of years ago. So now probably the quickest you could turn something around is 12 months maybe, but a couple of these things, like a couple of these lures that we'll talk about, um, I had that idea two and a half years ago. Some of these things have been in the in the works, and that and that might be you know six months of thinking about it and planning it and kind of um, coming up with the whole concept, and then you know a year and a half of actual development time and everything like that. So yeah, it can be quite a long process. Now, I think the uh, the hero product of Daiwa always is the reels. You've got a few new reels that are going to be of excitement to uh, the ABT guys this year. Run us through from, uh, I think, from from the cheaper reels up. Take us through what yep. the, uh, what's what's on offer. Yeah, so we, we launched, uh, I guess, three reels last night that were going to be um, up the alley of, I guess, a, an ABT guy. So the one I'm holding up here, that's the new TD Black MQ. So I know you've, Steve, you've been uh, running a couple of the Caldeas uh, MQs this year. Yep. A TD Black MQ is is really based on the same platform as Caldea. It's just the Australian specific model. So from like a gear ratio, spool sizes, that sort of thing, it's really dialed in for what we want here. So like this little one I, I just held up, that's the 2000 shallow spool. So that's my personal favorite for a lot of the brim stuff I do. But we've got, you know, 2,500s, 3,000s, 4,000s, which are going to be, you know, not just a brim reel. It's bass, barra, snapper, anything you want to do. Um, you can do that. And that's now got that MQ body technology. So that single piece body, which gives you that much bigger drive gear now all the way down into a reel that is retailing for two ninety nine. So It's fair to say, isn't it, that every year when new reels come out, the technology from a more expensive reel moves down the line doesn't it like it was only a few years ago that the mq technology was limited to your very top end reels but now it's you know a third of the price you can get into the same technology yeah so 2018 we did exist uh, mq or exist lt um which had a full mq body for the whole size range and that was the first time we'd done uh, a small reel throughout its full size range in mq and you know exists when they launched back then were 899 retail um and now you're getting the same technology, albeit in a different package, you're getting that in a $299 reel. Um, and just the performance of these things um, is, is quite mind blowing, really. They're, they're so much stronger and more rigid than the traditional way of making a spinning reel with the side plate and the screws. And not only that, they're, they're much better sealed to the element. So, um, you know, probably not so important for a, you know, a guy in a bass boat, but in an offshore boat where you've got the rod sitting in the rod holder in the gunnel copping water spray, you obviously eliminate that whole potential ingress point of water where the side plate joins on the frame and the screws hold that together. So by eliminating that, you obviously just you're prolonging the lifespan of the reel um, a lot uh, by re obviously reducing how much water and debris you can get into the gearbox. But then obviously equipping it with a much bigger drive gear at the same time gives you a stronger reel as well. So it's really... MQ for us is the future of spinning reels. Um, and you can see that through, you know, our evolution of dropping that technology from the exist uh, three or four years ago, now down as far as TD Black. So, I must admit, I haven't enjoyed using the Caldeas that you loaned us for this year. They're, um, 
they're a strong reel. There's nothing much that can go wrong with them. And it's, uh, you know, if a Morgan can't break them, they must be all right. Yeah, for sure. Take us up and to then, the level up. Yeah, so um, this uh, this reel will be, I guess, very um, familiar colourway to a lot of uh, dial fans in Australia. Um, that orange colour, obviously famous for the TD Soul name. So there is uh, TD Soul MQ now. So again, it gets the monocoque treatment. Uh, again, built off that Caldia platform, but importantly, TD Soul is the next model up. So it gets a couple of key upgrades, uh, namely around uh, the rotor design. So this rotor and the air bale um, on TD Soul is straight from uh, reels like the Exist, the Certate, the Luvius. So it has the very lightweight Zion air rotor, uh, the seamless one piece bale you know, mag seal, line roller, all those kind of good things, uh, which is where the upgrades come. But still, obviously, that monocoque body with the big gear set again. So, um, again, that's available. This is the 2000 shallow spool, uh, but they go up to a 4000 uh, deep spool, which is going to be perfect for the barra guys. Now, if I look at the differences between a current, you know, the TD Sol 3, I think it is the one that's out now, and the new MQ coming out, are they in the same sort of price range? Uh, it's actually cheaper than the previous model so um the reel we'll talk about next which is an, a brand new introduction for dialer actually kind of restructured our price i guess hierarchy you'd say um so you can pick up a td black now which also is cheaper than the previous model for 299 the old one was in the high 300s old td soul when it first came out was 479 this one will hit shops at 399 retail um for that 2000 s size um, so they've actually come down in price, which is um, pretty cool considering we've pop, put all this new technology and all these new features into it. Yeah, that's it. You won't see me running out to buy a, uh, an old model TD Soul, that's for sure. No, you definitely want to uh, wait for these ones to come out. They'll be, they'll be a little bit later this year. The TD Black will be first one to come out. TD Soul will be a little bit later. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely... If you like the the TD Souls from the past, you'll really love this new one. I think it's a it's going to be a really popular reel. So Tom, the next one up the line reminds me of the old uh, the old Geckers. Um, tell us about the the top of the line release you've got. Yeah, so good pickup on the cosmetics of that one. So yeah, pays uh, homage, I guess, to that old Geckervision EX from a few years ago. That candy apple red uh, with the gunmetal and gold, I guess, highlights. But uh, this one's called Revelry, so it's a brand new, I guess, name and family brand for Dialer. Uh, so it's not one you'd be familiar with. It's a brand new release, and it's uh, it's really exciting because this time we've actually done just two very distinctly different models within the one family group. So the one I'm holding up here is Revelry Finesse Custom. That's built on a Zion monocoque frame, which is uh, the same body as the Luvius reel from last year. So incredibly lightweight, like 100 and 50 grams for a little 2000 reel like this. Um, but then we also did a Revelry HD, which is built on an aluminium uh, monocoque frame, which is obviously going to be a little bit heavier, but that's in larger sizes from like a 2500 up to a 5000, which is going to be perfect for the guys fishing the Barra Tour. They want that heavy duty reel that can pack, you know, a lot of drag and stop those big fish uh, in the timber and stuff. We've done two separate I guess, ranges of reels in the one family, um, both with that same cosmetic. Um, so there's eight revelries to choose from in the range, whether you want a finesse custom model, which goes up to a 3000, or you want the heavy duty model, which goes up to a five. And uh, like to give you some example, I'm, I'm going to run a few of both of these reels on my boat. Uh, and I was using the HD models at Foster, actually. I was using the, the 3000 HD to pull those fish out of the racks because you want something that, obviously using a, a little bit heavier rod you've got a rack rod so that the heavier reel kind of not only balances it a little bit better but obviously just has that so much more power to winch those fish out of the racks so um they they kind of have uses both ways which is really cool so tell me as a tackle designer when when we fish the barra tour i get taught by my mate joe williams up at tinaru he says morgo if you can pull line off your off your reel when you strike the fish it's not it's not tight enough does that give you shutters when you've got 30 or 40 pound braid and a totally locked drag and a meter barra hitting a lure at the other end of it? I think it shows the, the I guess, the nature of Australia's fishery in that 
we use pretty small tackle to catch very big fish a lot of the time. You know, we're using what is essentially largemouth bass size gear to catch barramundi and Murray cod that could weigh, you know, a hundred pound. Um, so it is kind of from a from a tackle designing point of view. When I have the global meetings with the rest of the Daiwa companies, it's it's always something that we angle for from Australia is that if we if we continue to make the reels um, and the, all the gear, rods, reels, lures, line, everything, um, we need to maintain strength and durability and those kind of features as paramount, which I think we've done and, and things like monocoque to real technology really give us the ability to not only make it very strong, but at the same time make it more compact and lighter so it's nicer to use um, while still maintaining all that critical strength that you need for catching fish like barra. But are you scared? Oh, of course. <laughs> but I think I think that's I think that's the that's the fun of it, right? Is creating something and then going trying to break it. And if anyone's gonna break it, it's gonna be Australians generally. Yeah. So of course, that's something great. I've learned in uh, all the positions I've ever held is if anyone's going to break something, send a prototype to Australia because they'll yeah. break it. <laughs> oh, that's good. And it's good to see that in your design process, Australia gets a seat at the table. So I, I like the fact that you make the HD version that you can, if you're, if you're going to fish heavy braid and you're going to fish locked up braid, go for the HD because that's going to do the job better. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, I guess, the benefit of buying anything. Um, designed or, or sold by Dyer Australia is it's designed by the guys on the ground here in Sydney, whether it's myself or one of the other product guys uh, that we've got in Dyer now. You can be assured that the products you're buying, whether it's a reel, a rod, a lure, uh, anything like that is designed specifically for Australia, which is which is really key. Cool. Let's put the reel to side now and we want to talk through the brim, bass and barra tackle that you've got coming out. Let's talk um, Let's talk lures, et cetera, that you've got coming now. Let's, let's start at the small end. Let's talk about brim stuff. Yep. Cool. Um, so I guess uh, we'll start with probably one that's pretty iconic to uh, a lot of dial fans and that's the double clutch. So everyone's a fan of a double clutch. Um, and this year we've got a brand new size. So last year we did the 115, which has found a nice home in the in the Barrett um, markets up north. Um, but this year we've gone full other end of the spectrum. So we've gone to the baby 48 mil double clutch. So um, this one, again, this is probably like we were speaking about before, this has been a long time in the works um, to make a double clutch this small to get that um, silent gravity um, system inside it with the with the tungsten weight on that sliding wire um, was a fair bit of work to get it into a package this small but um, from a black brim fishery I think this is just absolutely going to cream it and we've already caught uh, heaps of uh, fish on the samples of these things I had a few samples with me down at uh, Gippsland in the first ABT caught a lot of fish on them caught a lot of fish in the Oz Open fishing these under the boats uh, I know Hickson lost a few of the samples in the Lane Cove fishing them under the boats in that Oz Open. So already, uh, I guess, tournament proven. But, I mean, nothing can resist a double clutch. And I think that 48 mil size opens up uh, a whole different fishery for us for double clutches. Like where you are on the Gold Coast, that hard body twitching um, technique under the pontoons on the Gold Coast. We've probably never had a double clutch to suit that because we've had something that's probably a little bit too big. Now with that 48 mil size, that's going to open up a whole nother uh, fishery for us. So that's really exciting. And do they uh, float or suspend in salt water? Uh, so these ones are suspending in salt water. So there'll be a, a, um, a float in uh, fresh water. Um, they're a, a, probably a slow float in salt water, um, which obviously it's very hard to get something, to make something perfectly suspend, you have to take into account water temperature, yep. uh, all that kind of thing as well. So we err on the side of slow floating in salt water because you can always add a little sticky weight or, or you know, bigger size up split ring or something to get it perfectly tuned. But um, yeah, slow float in salt water, um, very slow float. And uh, yeah, obviously perfect for that stop start jerk baiting. So uh, Tassie next year, if we get there, I'll definitely have a tackle box full of these for sure. What do you mean if we get there? We're going to get there. It's all it's booked in, mate. COVID's yeah. 
I hope so. And uh, and from a colour point of view, like I've just got a, a few of them behind me here. We've got all your favourites from you know, old double clutches and we've got a couple of new ones. Uh, this one here is one that Chris Hickson designed. We've got a couple of uh, nice reflective ones. Your favourite, old uh, Kawamutu, the Tassie special. Oh, yes. Um, silver. We've, uh, silver. Yes. Yeah, we've done that one now, which is in a sheer foil. So anytime you've probably seen last couple of years, we've done double clutches that are sheer um, uh, colours, which means it's that foil that looks solid until you hold it up to the light and then it's the see-through one. So it's um, opening up a, another level of uh, colour customization for us. So um, double clutch 48, I think it's going to be really popular. Now, we've seen uh, plenty of events this year get one on Bay Junkie. I think it's found a real niche with the Brim guys. I hear you've got uh, a few new cool colours for the Brim. Yeah, we do. We've got um, new colours across all the range, um, as well as some new shape, bigger shapes, which we'll talk about later. But these are just the new colours in um, two and a half inch scrubs. We've got five new colours in them. Uh, mixture of kind of freshwater bass stuff and, and Brim stuff. Um, a personal favourite of mine is this uh, fish oil UV, um, which was one that I was throwing at Foster this year in the racks. Yep. Um, it's like a, a, a dirty motor oil, I guess you'd call it. Um, but, yeah, it's certainly very rewarding to see that tournament won on Bait Junkies with um, Michael. And uh, and certainly, yeah, there's been a lot of success on them. So new colours uh, across all the shapes, uh, which I think should be a, a real winner for not just Brim guys, but there's some really good bass colours there and rainbow trouts and stuff that has always been a go-to colour of mine for places like Glenbourne and St. Clair. So. And, of course, if uh, any of you watching want to check out the actual colour range with great pics, etc., these are all uploaded right now on the Dive website, aren't they? Yeah, so everything we're talking about is live on the website now, so you can go through all the bait junkies have the UV colour images, so you can scroll through and look see what they look like under UV light. Um, all the little hard bodies and all that sort of stuff has those uh, UV images as well. So all the details are up there. So now is that is that all the brim stuff? You haven't got anything, any other secret Tommy bait? No, the, the, there's uh, the secret Tommy bait from Gippsland, um, which uh, which got me that good finish uh, earlier this year, which is the smaller uh, spike. So this is in feet spike forty four. Um, so we've had the spike, which is a 53 mil long bait, which has been really popular, uh, especially in Victoria. But uh, personally, this is probably one of my pet projects the last couple of years. Is uh, I was a big fan of the spike for a long time, even before I worked at Dollar, and I always wanted, when I was up in Brisbane especially, always wanted a slightly smaller version. And uh, that was one that I started a long time ago and um, we finally got it now, the 44 mil uh, spike, and we actually did it in two diving depths because I always wanted a spike that went a little bit deeper. So we have the spike 44 MR, which is about a six foot diver, and we have the spike 44 EXDR, so extra deep runner, which goes up to 12 foot. So that's going to be the, the brim crankbait of choice, I think, for myself and plenty of other guys in the next uh, 12 months. So, Tom, it's fair to say that the double clutch would be more a jerk bait, and this spike will be more a crankbait. Yeah, correct. So double clutch very suited to that stop-start jerkbait fishing. Um, the spike is more of your, I guess, shad-shaped crankbait, so that stretched out kind of more elongated um, crankbait shape. Obviously, you can still twitch it, and I was I was fishing these like a jerkbait at the Gippsland event in the cut, um, but that's more about kind of dredging up the bottom and stirring that sand up more than, you know, fishing it like a jerkbait. You're kind of ripping it into the ground to stir up the, the silt. But, yeah, definitely suited to that slow roll technique. That's great. Let's um let's jump up to the bass fishermen. Let's can't forget about our freshwater brothers. Um, what have we got for the bass fishermen this year? Yep. So we've got a brand new spinnerbait, which is going to be uh, suited to the bass guys. So this is uh, called Steez Azrock. So we had, uh, we've had the Steez spinnerbait now for a couple of seasons, uh, yep. which is your tandem or double willow style um, spinnerbait. So this has that large profile Indiana blade. Um, so much more suited to the, I guess, the dirtier water that you'd probably find in, in the rivers and that sort of thing. Um, but that big Indiana blade obviously throws a lot of uh, vibration out 
um, and it's uh, got a special uh, tapered wire which is suited to that blade to give you a nice vibration. Um, obviously, all the other same features, Saxas hook, hand-tied skirt. So a very high-quality spinnerbait. doesn't uh, replace the Steez spinnerbait, but sits alongside it as, a, as another option. Yeah, as a high vibration option. And, of course, all of the reels that you've released have the bass sizes as well. So it's good to see that, uh, that those lines of reels pass across all of the ABC species. Uh, anything, yeah, correct. Anything else for the bass guys? Uh, no, we're probably into the barra stuff now. Um, so perfect timing for the Awunga uh, and all their barra tour events later in the year. Yeah, well, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll stay COVID-free and uh, Queensland Barra Tour can go as planned. What have you got for the barra guys? Yeah, so we'll start with, uh, I guess we'll start with the hard baits. Um, so we've got a new jerk bait for the barra um, coming out uh, in about a month's time. So this is called Steve's Current Master. So it's a 93 mil suspending uh, in the salt water uh, jerk bait. So this is like your... Your smaller brother of say the double clutch 115 that we brought out last year um and ready to fish for barra straight out of the pack so very heavy duty split rings that's got the new bkk viper 41 uh treble hook so that very strong um bkk treble which the double clutch 115s come with as well yeah um, but obviously that's smaller profile and um, then the 115 is going to be uh very good in the dams but in the rivers and stuff, especially up north, uh, that's going to be a, a real, real ripper, I think. And I, and I like the fact that you don't have to go screwing with it, one, you know, putting different hooks on once you get it. You know, those those BKKs have proved themselves over a variety of lures over the over the years, and uh, good to see that you can just take it straight out of the box, put it on, and catch fish with it. Yeah, for sure. And we've got a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of colours in that one. There's you know all the whites and. Uh, black and golds and reds and spangled perch colours and that sort of thing. So that's the pack to look for. Steve's current master. They'll be they'll be uh, out just in time for Barra Tour, and I think they're going to be um, super popular. So nice silent jerk bait for the Barra stuff. And then and we're the into apartment. yeah. So then we're into um, soft plastics. So bait janky, as we spoke about before, we did some new colours, um, but we've also done the new paddle tail. So um, bigger um, profile paddle tail so 4.2 inch which is on the bottom and the 6.2 inch one uh, which is on the top so nice big paddle tail plastics um you know perfect for that um barra barra fishing uh, in the dams it's um it's really interesting to see that the uh, something that might have originally been developed for bream and bass of course bait fish are bait fish and you know anything that likes eating a four or five inch bait fish is going to have a crack at it. It's going to be really interesting to see how uh, both the saltwater and freshwater guys take on those new products. How have they been so far with your product testers? Yeah, so far. Um, so we had uh, the 6.2 uh, inch minnow that we've, uh, we've been testing for a long time, especially. Um, I have a, friend, a good friend of mine that's a barra guide up in Weeper and uh, we sent him some of the first samples and, I think he's up to something like 14 or 15 metre plus wild um, barra on the same plastic. Um, and one thing that, that we did do differently in, in these uh, shapes is it's, it's not just the same shape as the smaller ones upscaled. Um, you know, we made, did things like make the, the actual flat surface of the paddle tail a lot thicker um, and make the actual plastic itself firmer. And that was because um from my experience barra fishing and talking to all our testers and, and other guys that the barrow you really want that kind of telltale thump through the rod tip you want to be able to feel that bait working and the obviously the firmer you make the material the more that that vibration then transfers up your line if you have a very soft plastic um which you know we we do on things like our two and a half inch grubs because you want it to swim on a, the lightest jig head possible you know, with a barra plastic, you're not worried about it swimming on a 140th jig head. You're worried about it giving off that that aggressive action. And so we made it out of a firmer Elastamax material to give you that that I guess the the feeling of that thumping through the through the rod tip. That you know your paddle tails down there working, and that barra can sense it from a from a long way away with their lateral line. So. It's cool, mate, and I really appreciate the fact you've uh, got the time for us this afternoon to go through all of the new products and give an ABT-specific 
view on just how they were designed and what niches they're uh, they're uh, going to fit into. Any no more secrets for us, or is that, that is information overload for the tackle junkies? No, there's always more secrets, but that that that'll do it for this one. Um, but yeah, there's always new stuff we're working on. So if you uh, if you ever see uh, see us at a tournament, any one of the dialer guys, there's probably a couple of secrets hidden away in their boat. But um, there's plenty of stuff here covering, yeah, obviously the uh, brim bass and barra circuit, but all the new stuff that we launched last night, whether you're into surf fishing or boat fishing or electric fishing or whatever it might be. Um, all that stuff is up on the dial website now, so you can go and check it out for yourself. And give us the exact website, Nine. We'll have it down in the super down below, but tell us what it is. Uh, so, yeah, www.dialfishing.com.au. Uh, all the stuff will be there, uh, and you can grab one of the new catalogues from your local dialer retailer. Um, we sent those out a few weeks ago, so they'll be in the stores. You can go and grab your free copy of the new dial catalog as well. Awesome, mate. Thanks very much for taking us through it. Thanks for being a great ABT sponsor. We'll catch you next time. No worries. Thanks, mate.